In our first part of Welcome to the Rock, we learned that the FDNY's premier training facility is as much about the traditions of the FDNY as it is about training its newest members. In this episode, we'll continue to learn about the Rock's facilities and history, along with a visit from a surprise special guest. But first, let's take a trip down memory lane with the boys. We never lose anybody. There might be a kitchen on fire in the projects, the bedrooms are in the rear, you might have to pass that fire and then go to the rear and search the bedroom. You'll have enough time to do that and come back out. Alright, you got that? Keep track of your men you're with. We don't want to lose nobody. So this is where it all started, Ruffy. This is where we got sworn in. This is where you get sworn in. This yep. is the uh, auditorium. And it's also where you graduate. Uh, it was. So yep. if you want to. My mother, to go. Ellie Kubler, was sitting right over there. Yep. You go up on the stage. Giuliani. Uh, uh, Giuliani. Right. Hand you your, your One, diploma. Two, three, four. Right here. Uh, uh, let's see how this looks. Sweet. Ah, oh, so many years. Good time. So this is where Chief Sakamano stood at the podium up here, and, and he said something like, uh, "If you think you're going to skate through this Proby School, you are sorely mistaken." <laughs> All five foot two of them. <laughs> he was about this tall. Everybody was scared. Of him. Yep. Good stuff. A lot of years. Good stuff. So, Chief, tell us uh, how we got into a New York City subway uh, station. No, 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 no. no. We're, we're at Building 14. It's the subway simulator, right? This is oh. where we train our firefighters oh. in subway operations, right? As you see, it's set up for somebody who's on the platform and gets rolled along the platform. They got too close. We can we simulate that here. That's a, Unfortunately, that's a, a fairly common occurrence in New York City, but our members are well trained to handle that. But as I mentioned previously, we decorate with a purpose and the, we want the training to be a fully immersive in experience, which you certainly get in here. As you see, the, the room that we first go into has all the different um, uh, props on the walls, right? So it's a fully immersive in experience as the instructor tells them about all the different things. Even in here, right, the track identification signs, all the different things to make it where our firefighters don't get injured or killed while they're operating in a subway. Actually, Chief, you had the uh uh, given this to me. This was Remembrance Bulletin. What is this exactly? Yeah, so what we want to do is, is uh, we put out these Remembrance Bulletins on the anniversary of line of duty deaths. This is a, a new thing that we started to like do it. because, like you know, if I mention Vandalia Avenue, Watch Street, Frisbee Fitzpatrick, um, uh, Walton Avenue, right, McLaughlin, McLaughlin, right? So, you know, we should know as a member of the FDNY, you should be able, in your mind, think of four or five things from that, right? But that we don't that we don't repeat these lessons, right? right. That we learn from, from history, these, right. from history, um, because those are the watch outs. Those are the watch outs in our book, typically, in our, in our written books, right? You always hear our books are written in the blood of firefighters, but we gotta make sure that we learn those lessons and make sure that, we, that every generation knows them. Um, like so, it. the one that you're holding is one, this firefighter, uh, Carmelo Pusia, was killed in the line of duty January 6th of 1970. And on this, this coming January, we're going to dedicate Building 14 wow. to his memory. He was a firefighter working in Engine 53. Um, they responded into the subway system, and they did all the things that you would think would be right. They had power off, all different things, but a diesel train came by and struck them oh when goodness. they were extinguishing a rubbish fire. I never knew that either. But when we started this project, it's been a learning experience for, for all of us, right? So, um, you know, stay learnable on the fire department. There's always something else you're going to learn. Um, and the, the, the great folks that work in the subway unit have, you know, you'll see the signs in there. They've worked with the, with the MTA and the subway folks to, to get some of the props that, that, that we need. Again, we want to make our training as realistic and okay. fully immerse our firefighters in it because that's when training becomes rememberable. And the goal is they get this. Every company that comes here has that. And every firefighter is going to know yeah, who yeah. this firefighter yeah, yeah. was. Yeah. It, it should never be like I just did. I never heard of that story, right? I mean, yeah, and, and yeah. listen, and I'm, 
I'm a, I'm a student of the fire service. I read fire related stuff every day. Um, I always have, and I didn't know about this. Yeah, so yeah. if I didn't know about it, there's, there's yeah, plenty yeah, of people. Yeah. So our objective is to produce between 100 and 150 of these, I like um, and then issue them in a book to all of our units, and hopefully they read it at roll call, right? That way we could ingrain all of, all of these. Because, you know, our history, our long history, we've had a lot of line of duty deaths. There's a lot of repeatable, um, uh, line of duty, line right, of duty right. deaths out there as well, and there's some that aren't as relevant. So we're not gonna we're not gonna cover those in a specific remembrance bulletin. You know, we we had a member that got um, that got hit by a trolley car, right? So that's right, right, or a horse uh, or that's something. Not, yeah, right. exactly. Kicked by a horse. That's exactly right. So we've had those, but we've had people get hit by 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 taxis, wall collapses. You know, a, a bunch in loft buildings. Yeah, that has to be re relived all this, you know. Yeah, so, time. you know, we're doing one, another one that we're going to do in January was a fire in 1908 in a loft building when the loft building collapsed. And, you know, you we've, we've read yeah, the loft right, bulletin right, that we right, have. Yeah, it's a huge right. bulletin, but it's full of a lot of information. And you could see specific paragraphs that were written for that particular incident. And that's something else that I never knew. So we're going to make sure that all of our members know about all these, that when they're operating at something, they know these are the different types of situations that have great. taken our people. I think it's great. All right, so this is the classroom where when our members come for subway training, this is where they start. So this was here when you guys were here, right? So yes. the room is still the same, but right, the, the optics this, of it right, 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 have no changed, doubt. right? So all the different things that we see in a subway, right, whether it's a, the power removal and, and how to contact the train dispatcher so they can look at it, all, all, all the props, the, you know, if you see this, no the, there's no clearance, right? So all the different things, all the watch outs for our members and the things that we're going to see. Again, the track identification, where the emergency exits are, all the different things that are going to keep our brothers and sisters safe. Um, graffiti, yeah, so, <laughs> right, we still see that um, and, and different so planes, trains, and automobiles, as I've mentioned, and now we have the ship simulator as well, but different pitches that they could talk about a scenario, right? So someone says, hey, I was at that. Well, you could, and you could show a picture of it, an evacuation, right? Evacuating a simple train, you know, there's typically a thousand, there could be a thousand people on a train. Evacuating a thousand people without a fire is a challenge. So in upper Manhattan, they had that fire that, that killed the, um, the train operator. So while, while we build this, right, so we're getting it ready for the dedication, for our firefighter, they were also putting a little memorial for that for that member, for that MTA member. So you think about it, how cool is that, right? So he's credited with saving a bunch of lives that day as well. Um, wow. And that was a really serious fire that, you know, we, we could have really had well, our members in, in right. jeopardy because it was, um, it, you know, it was significantly below ground in that area where, where, the, uh, where the train station was. And our members, luckily, um, you know, from all of our training here, um, you know, we were able to put the fire out with, uh, and, and, not, and not suffer any casualties yeah, ourselves. Yeah, because you're dealing with uh, communication issues, obviously, right? That's always the yeah, number one issue. stretching the line where the fire was right. in the train because it was zero visibility. You know, how long are you going to have on your right, SCBA? Right stretch. Yeah, so all these different things, the, the, the enormity of the problems, right? So they address all of those here when our members come. And, and, and we have units that come here in service every day, right? So we're, we're training our members on subway ops, you know, every day. So Chief, what in the wide world of sports do we have here? We have <laughs> a section of an Airbus A321 that was decommissioned and donated to us. So um, we have two sections of this plane. We have the front that is gonna be a permanent uh, prop and we have the second one that is on the, uh, the collapse pile, right? That uh, we'll see later on. This will be the permanent one and this is all of our members will learn about uh, aircraft emergencies and what they could do. So the, the interesting thing about this prop, right, is that we took delivery of this the day before the anniversary of the Miracle on the Hudson. And it, the oh, Miracle on the Hudson was a similar plane, an Airbus, uh, of the 320 series planes. And so as the crow flies, where that plane landed is just under two miles from here. So it's apropos in the fact that we're gonna train all of our members, yet that landed in Manhattan, Manhattan companies responded to that, but traditionally they would never get aircraft training because they don't respond to JFK or LaGuardia. Right, they don't go to the airport. But they're some of the closest units to, to Newark Airport, right? And our Staten Island units would be as well. So we're gonna be able to train other units on this, not just those that typically get, get training, which would be our SOC units and those that respond to those airports, but this will give us the ability to train to train everybody. This will be connected to building 14, the subway simulator, right? So this will have, uh, um, it'll have a gateway, it'll be gateway 14A, um, and we'll be able to train all our members on here. So right now it's not complete, it needs to be put on, but the permanent prop is gonna have the cockpit 
because even if the plane's empty it, in 2021 it's still going to have a it's still going to have a pilot eventually maybe they won't have pilots but but for now they still have pilots so if, if nothing else you're going to have to remove the remove the pilot um sure you must be kidding <laughs> i'm not it's kidding not, and don't call me Shirley. Shirley. <laughs> okay chief so what are we looking at here so what we have here, this is our outside collapse simulator, or what I've always known it to be the outside collapse simulator. However, we happen to have uh, Battalion Chief Joe Downey here with us today, and in the next month or two, this is gonna be, this area is gonna be dedicated to his dad. So who better than to, to explain this area to us than Chief than Downey. Chief Downey. So yeah, Joe, all right, thank it's you. all, all you yours, tell us about this. <laughs> yeah, so um, the collapse simulator is gonna be changed to the Deputy Chief Ray Downey Disaster Training Site. And why we're calling it the All Hazards Disaster Training Site is because we could do multiple disciplines here. And uh, it's fitting that we're naming it after him at this location because this is where the first training trailer was for the rescue school back in like 92. The rescue school started here and the trailer was here and the guys that were building the pile said, uh, it wasn't even my idea, they said, why don't we name it after your father? Being that this is where the trailer was and encompasses many different disciplines as I said. The one at the end here that almost looks like Oklahoma with the slab hanging. He ran the operations in Oklahoma. That was the last part of the puzzle they put together. But you can't see it from here, but there's all tubes underneath here. All confined space tubes, training, it's breaking and breaching, uh, heavy lifting. Anything you could think and you want to do at a collapse, we can do it right here, which we never had. And if you look at the plane, you know, next to it here, that's the new addition that we got. And the plan is, as long as Chief Lee is all right with it, we're going to cut it in half. We're going to put it on two sections of the collapse pile here. It looked like it, that it crashed. Wow. And then we'll close it up. And it's training for everybody. It's just not for the rescue and squad guys. We'll open it up to Soxport Ladder. The ladder company's in here. And uh, parking garage collapses. Anything you can imagine, we could do it right here. So um, Anywhere in the country that has plane uh, simulators like this, is there? I don't know. Maybe Teeks has one, but not, I don't believe, on a collapse pile where they incorporate into yeah, the pile. I don't pile. know of anybody that has it on a collapse pile. But you know what? We train for the possible, right? right. Whatever, whatever it is, planes, trains, automobiles, and, and even our ship simulator, we have it all. So there's no better person to dedicate this to, to than your dad, with, without question. He was, he was the chief of SOC when, when I went into SOC in 1998. Um, and I just want to bring up another point because I know you were instrumental in we now have the fire marshals here with their yes. canine dogs so um, can you speak a little about the canine dogs and and like how do we get to this point and and all of that is you know that better than yeah, I yeah well we're the collapse agency for New York City the fire department is the collapse agency uh, we didn't have any search and rescue dogs for years so uh, we've tried for about about 17 years now and the only avenue that we were able to get them was through the fire marshals Joe DiGiacomo one of our SOC guys, I think you may have worked with, he was in 270 and 252. He did the Austin program for the fire marshals. Tremendous. They do a great job. And we went to him and the fire marshals and said, listen, these dogs could be crushed trains. I know they could. And he said, yes. He's like, we'll support it. We'll help you support it. And now we have four search and rescue dogs that also use this collapse pile to train up their dogs. So, and they've just done that in the last six months. Yeah, we gave them the area for the trailer, which is right behind this recently. And I see them out here all the time training. Uh, they work in hard. Dogs. The dogs are excellent. If they come out here, you put somebody inside here, the dog finds them like oh, that. Right. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. yeah, it's amazing how these dogs work. So uh, now they have the arson, they have, um, the search and rescue dogs and they're working on Joe's got one more dog a human remains dog because everybody saw the collapse in, in Florida you know mostly the workload there was for human remain dogs it wasn't really search and rescue right. after the first day or two so um, they're already thinking we need human remains and Joe's on top of it and he said he's got one working up already so right. uh, the fire department we don't have a lot of collapses but we do have major collapses in the city and I think our guys that work on here this pile prepares them the best at anywhere in the country that's great. What did I say as we were walking up, Chief? We've come a long way from that one skinny trailer when we first <laughs> yeah, got we on the job. Yeah, we certainly have. <laughs> and it's, it's right, right here. here. Yeah, and it was right here. It no, right we certainly here. have. And we, we couldn't be uh, more fortunate that you happen to be here today no, to no. go over this with us. So. Well, the nice good thing you. is that Appreciate we've got you, special operations guys in good positions. When we first got this area, it was kind of overgrown and nobody wanted to give it to anybody. But Chief Richardson was the chief of training. Wow. You know, we, we came to Chief Richardson, <laughs> and uh, he said, no, if you guys could clean it up, this was a mess back here. They put all new gravel down, they cleaned it up, and they still had the section for the rock for their cars that we kept here. And now we're working very well together because Chief Lee is here. You know, we're working together. He used our guys, we use their guys, and uh, I don't think the training's been any better. 
uh, training is great. It's, it's really, fantastic. It's fantastic. We, we have really been, I think I tell people, we are stewards of training from the previous generation and our job is to, to, to make it, uh, keep moving it forward, right? And we certainly, we certainly have, SOC certainly has, so uh, we appreciate you taking a couple of minutes uh, today to yeah. go over this for us. So, like I said, no one knows this area better than you, so. No, and the guys that did, I gotta give Louis Amoroso, Tommy Fee, they spearheaded with a lot of heavy, heavy uh, engineers, you know, the guys that are in our companies came out here and a lot of stuff was donated. You know, for this, it didn't cost too much. It, it was a lot of donations, and they were able to just get it from the bridges that were coming down, right, right, right. the slabs they were taking off, the uh, steel, everything was here, and uh, they did a fantastic yeah. job. The guys that built it. We're Farm certainly fortunate. We have a lot of good relationships with people in other industries that are, that talented are willing to help guys. us out. And talented, talented guys, talented guys yeah. that could do this work. I mean, you guys worked with them, some of them. Yeah, we're king of scrounging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've done a good job. We got Louis, the Italian guy. I know somebody. I know somebody that could get the, the concrete. The gravel, no problem. I got the guys with the gravel. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Outstanding. Yeah. Stay tuned for part three of the series. And as always, thank you for watching. And remember to like, subscribe, and share.